Next on the integration tech, we have Nicola Ferrara. Uh, from Camel to Camlets, a new connectors for event-driven applications. Nicola, the floor is yours. Thank you, Zoran. I will share my screen and start the, the presentation. Um, can you give me a feedback, Zoran, when, if you see my screen? Your screen is up. Okay. And now it's full screen. Perfect. Thank you. Okay. Let's start this presentation called From Camel to Camelets, um, New Connectors for Event Driven Application. So, who am I? I'm Nicola Ferraro. Um, I work as software engineer for Red Hat. This is my, my Twitter handle, uh, and I underscore Ferrara usually uh, post news about uh, Apache Camel, Camel K, and Camelets because this is what I work on, uh, especially Camel K and Camelets. I started the, this, these two projects from, from the beginning. Um, I work also on Red Hat integration. I've contributed uh, um, in, in the past also to Knative, especially things related to, to Apache Camel. Um, what I'm going to talk to you about, um, this is the agenda. So in the first part, I will tell you something about camelets and how to use them. So uh, camelets from the point of view of someone that wants to um, use them to integrate system and to connect systems. Uh, in the second part, I will show you how camelet is made and how to write actually your own camelet and contribute it to, to the, the, the Apache Camel catalog. There are two demos. I have no recording for them, so this uh, um, uh, I, I took advantage of this means to, to pray for the demo gods, uh, <laughs> but uh, let, let's hope that everything will go uh, well. So let's start this presentation. Let's talk about camelets from a point of view of a user. Okay. Uh, first of all, uh, I hope you know um, enough about Apache Camel. There have been here in this uh, um, uh, yeah. Uh, sessions before uh, about Apache Camel, so I'm not going to the detail about Apache Camel. You just need to know that this is the Swiss knife of integration. Um, it, it is an open source project with many, many sub projects like Camel Quarkus, Camel Cup Paper Metro, Spring Boot, Caraf. Uh, here in this talk, I'm going to focus on two of them uh, Camel Camelets and Camel K. They are two sub projects that we have created in the uh, recent year. Let's start with the Camelets. Uh, what they are. So um, we have created a catalog of um, connectors. Camelets are essentially connectors. What they are, they essentially they allow you to um, connect uh, uh, systems to your event-driven platform, whether you're using Kafka, you're using Pulsar, or any messaging system that you use inside your infrastructure. Um, you can pick a Camelet from the catalog and just use that. Uh, without any knowledge about Apache Camel, without anything else than following a few basic instructions, um, you can you can start an integration uh, using all the power of Apache Camel. Uh, so why we started this project about um, that, that created this catalog of Camelets uh, that is available also on the Camel website, and I will show you how to uh, access that. Um, so the reasons are mainly three. So the world today is even driven. Um, in many organizations, people are starting to use um, Kafka or Pulsar or um, eventing system like Knative and other um, messaging platform, but they started to uh, uh, convey events across all the phases of the organization, especially with microservices architecture. Um, events are becoming more and more important. Um, Java, is not the main programming language when we talk about um, backend uh, systems, uh, especially if you want to, to do some machine learning, the preferred language is now Python. Uh, there are many people using JavaScript or TypeScript, but also Go for many parts of the application. So um, Java is a bit phasing out. Um, and if you consider that a few Java developers can understand how Apache Camel works, um, uh, you see that there is something wrong because um, Camel offers a lot of capabilities that are interesting to many, many people, not only to a few Java developers. Um, so that's why we created this concept of Camelets. These Camelets are um, connectors that are ready to use. They are receipts uh, created by Camel developers that anybody, no matter their background, can use so they can consume. Uh, you don't need to be a Camel developer to, to, to consume a Camel, to use a Camelet. And this is the, the basic idea. So how does it work? Um, we Camel developers, uh, the official Camel developers, I mean the Camel committers, but also anyone that wants to contribute. And at the end of this presentation, I hope I will tell you how to contribute a new Camel, which is a really, really easy process. Um, 
so people that are uh, that have knowledge about Apache Camel can create camelets and publish them on a camelet catalog. We have a, a Apache a camelet catalog that contains all these camelets, these connectors. Um, but you can also create your own camelet catalog for your organization, as we will see later. And then after it's published, it appears also on the camel website, and then people can just go uh, choose a, a camelet, so a connector, and uh, bring data from that camelet, from that connector to their own platform. And people that can do this, so they don't need to understand Apache Camel, they can do like Mark Camille, with notably. Um, doesn't know, didn't know anything about Apache Camel um, a, a few years ago. Um, so uh, even Luke Skywalker can use them. If you are a Camel developer, you can still use Camelets in a form of local development. I mean, um, Camelets are ready to use building blocks that you can just pick and um, bind to a specific destination. Uh, and if you want to change the behavior of the camera, you can go into the details and so write some code to build another camera, a different version of the camera that can be later used uh, without any coding. Um, so this is really um, an abstraction mechanism that we have created and that is really useful from many points of view. So what types of camelets, what types of connectors are available uh, in that catalog? So there are sources, sinks, and actions. So, um, sources, in particular, uh, here there is an example about the AWS SQS source. A source is um, a connector that can take data from an external system into your platform, whether you're using Kafka or, or Pulsar or ActiveNQ or whatever you use. Um, it's it's uh, mentioned that as a generic platform there. So data from outside into a platform, they are sources. The things can take data from your platform and bring that outside. For example, the Dropbox things can create a file on Dropbox whenever an event is published by your platform on a specific topic, for example. Um, actions are really interesting because they allow to change the data um, uh, in motion. For example, a PDF action, which is available in the catalog, can take an event that you publish on your platform, transform that into a PDF. And then you save that using the Dropbox things into Dropbox. So um, this is really um, the three main building blocks that you can compose in basically in a um, uh, workflow, in a simple workflow um, to take data from your platform to an external system or to the external system from to your platform. Um, so this is it. How you can use camelets. Uh, there are many ways. The fundamental one is using Camel K. Camel K is an extension of Kubernetes, so it's an operator um, that works with Kubernetes, vanilla Kubernetes, also OpenShift, um, and it allows uh, running Camel things inside the cluster with the really, really, um, and it, it is really easy to use. Uh, camelets were born in the context of Camel K, but now we are expanding Camelets, especially in other projects. If you look, for example, at Camel Kafka Connector, um, there is a branch that is going to be merged that contains um, um, the possibility to use Camelets. So instead of using the um, pre-built connectors, you can use Camelets also in Camel Kafka Connector. And there are many other examples. There are also presentations about using that on Camel Core and JBank. So, but we are focusing on Camel K, and um, you will see why uh, in a moment. Just a few things about Camel K. I'm one of the creators of Camel K. Uh, I don't want to focus on the details, but just to know the, the full picture. Camel K is an operator that can be installed on Kubernetes and offers uh, the possibility to run Camel code in the form of custom resources. So, uh, you install the operator, there are, uh, the operator offers a many custom resources, three of which are um, uh, shown in, in this slide. The Camelet itself is a custom resource, so you can install Camelets into a namespace and then use them. Um, the Camelet binding is the custom resource that allows you to bind a Camelet, for example, the AWS SQS source, to a destination, for example, Kafka topic. Um, so this is the, 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 the role of the Camelet binding. Under the hood, the camel binding is transforming into a, an integration. The integration is the most generic uh, custom resource that we use in, in camel case or fundamental built-in block. But you don't need to understand all the details. Um, just to mention that if um, camel K is installed on a Kubernetes or OpenShift cluster where Knative is also installed, Knative is a, another set of operators that um, bring 
um, serverless capabilities, as Mary was saying in the previous talk, in the pre talk before this. Um, so Camel K is able to leverage the serverless capabilities offered by Knative to um, transform your integration into auto-scaling services and bind them automatically to Knative channels. We'll see something in the demo. OK, it's demo time. Um, uh, today, I have prepared the, this thing. Um, I'm going to create into an OpenShift namespace a Knative channel. I have an OpenShift with the Knative installed. Then I'm going to bring data from uh, a Telegram source. So basically, I have this Telegram chat with the Camel K operator. We to, to write some data here, and that will flow into the messages uh, channel. And then I will print the logs. Uh, of, of the messages as logs into an, an integration and create another binding to AWS S3 to create files from messages that are pushed into this channel. Okay, we're going, we're going to create three camelot bindings, basically. Okay, let's start. Uh, first of all, where is the catalog? Um, if you go into the Apache Camel website, um, today uh, the link to the Camel catalog is inside this documentation link. If you go under Camel K, we are going to move that outside of Camel K because it was born here, but now it's a generic thing. You see the Camel catalog, which uh, contains many things and sources that you can use with your uh, platform, the, the platform, with, with whatever platform you have installed. And for example, the first one that I want to create, I said, you see a lot of them here. Um, there is a Telegram source that I want to use, and the, the documentation which is created uh, after the Camelot themselves, uh, so it's all contained in the Camelot, um, requires an authorization token and provides an example on how to use the Camelot to bind the data from Telegram to a Kinetic channel. Uh, we can copy this, or we can do something better. I will show you. Um, let's go to an open shift. Uh, cluster that they've created on um, IBM Cloud. Uh, this uh, was a, um, a, a cluster created from scratch. And if you go into the Operator Hub and look for Camel, the Operator Hub is available on all of the ship instances, but there is an equivalent way to install Camel K also on Vanilla Kubernetes. You will find that there is this Camel K operator that is already installed here, the, Valide, the, the, the community version. There is also a Red Hat support of the version of it. And in particular, in this class, I have already installed both the Camel K operator and the Red Hat OpenShift serverless operator, which brings Knative serving and eventing. Um, I've installed both globally. So in this namespace, Camel and Neftest, um, you will see no pods, as you will see here in the pod section. So there are no pods at the moment. So both are installed globally as extensions. Uh, for the cluster. So um, I'm going to create, first of all, a channel where I'm going, I'm going to push uh, messages. And uh, I can go, I can do it uh, directly from the console. Let's call these messages. And I create it here. This is, by default, it creates an in-memory channel from, from Knative. Um, I want to take data from uh, tele this Telegram chat, as I said, and bring that into this channel. I can do it by copying the documentation on the Camel website, or um, there is an integration in OpenShift to create an event source directly from here. So I can uh, go to create an event source, and there are all the Camelets that are present in the catalog. Uh, the sources in particular are present here. And you can also search for Telegram, and you find the Telegram source that you can use as source for messages. When you click here, you, you see the same uh, documentation that you see on the Camel website, and you can create an event source starting from uh, this Camelot. And it requires uh, the token, the authorization token. I've uh, already saved my authorization token for talking um, to my bot together um, with other, other data. And I can just paste it here, and I can specify the destination of the data, which will be the messages channel that I've already created. OK, so this form is generated by the OpenShift platform, and I can hit Create, and I'm going to create this Telegram source. Let's call this uh, Telegram source binding. OK, uh, but this form is uh, only generating a YAML uh, representation. It's generating a Camelot binding that is what uh, the Camel website was suggesting me to do. Uh, this Camel binding binds a source called Telegram source with this authorization token to a sync called uh, messages, which is a Knative channel. I can also change this binding, as I was saying before, um, to put here also some additional steps. For example, in this case, I would like to send to, 
go to this channel, only messages belonging to me. Um, how can I do? Um, I can go um, in the documentation and say there is a uh, has header filter action, uh, which is documented into the Camelot uh, catalog. I can just copy this snippet to add uh, a step into this event source and say, okay, I want only the messages which have this header called chat ID, which was documented into the Telegram um, Camelot. And this should be equal to this value which is my own chat ID. So only myself can push data into this uh, uh, channel. Okay, I create this source. I created it fully from the OpenShift console. And you see here that this has been created. And this is going to push data into the messages channel as soon as I write that. In terms of pods, this is running in a pod uh, at the moment. And uh, Okay, um, this will push data into the channel, but there is no, no one uh, listening for, for, for data. Um, what I can do is to create uh, a sync, and especially I can create a log uh, sync, of the sync uh, which only prints uh, the data in, in the logs. And uh, in order to create it, I can follow the example this time from the Camel website. Um, there are other ways to do it, and I will show uh, them later. Let's call this log sync binding dot yaml, and just paste the example. So uh, this says, okay, I want to use as a source the channel from Kinetic called messages, and as a sync, I want to use the uh, log sync um, camelet. Okay, um, in order to create this. Uh, I can just use OC, OC apply minus F, uh, the log sync binding. I'm connected to the same namespace that I was showing before. And when I OC apply this, um, this camelet, um, there is a drop because the cluster is remote. Uh, this is going to be created in the cluster. You see here that the log sync binding integration is shown also here. Um, this is an extension for VS code that you can install looking for extension uh, around Apache Camel. Um, this uh, is this belongs to the extension pack for Apache Camel by Red Hat, and in particular is the tooling for Apache Camel K, which is included in the pack. So it shows all the integrations that are running in the cluster and allow me also to follow the logs of the integration uh, directly from here. So if I um, write something here, hello, I should see here the message info uh, which contains the json data from myself and uh, yeah nicola ferraro and the text was hello and uh, this is the chat id etc so whatever i put into telegram now it's printed from from um, this integration i can stop following um the logs for now but that um is not was not a local process that uh, was created here in in the cluster of course um since i'm listening from a Knative uh, channel. Camel K is intelligent. The operator created a Knative serving service and also a subscription from the, from the channel to bring data into this integration. So if I stop sending messages into Telegram now, um, then this is going to scale down to zero. Okay, so let's do the other part. Okay, just to uh, make clear what, what I, I'm doing. Um, it, there is also another way to create the same integration. So if, uh, if you type camel bind, camel is the camel KCLI that you can um, use instead of creating YAML. Uh, camel bind uh, channel messages um, log sync. I'm not going to do it, but I just see, I'm uh, going to see the, the YAML version of it. Um, so basically this, um, is going to create um, a camelet binding. So um, that is equivalent to the one that you see uh, here above. So this integration, so from messages to log, can be also created by a single command, the camel bind the channel messages log sync uh, without the YAML part. Um, this is it. So all the camelet bindings can also be created using this kind of commands. Um, let's create the other integration. You see that here, the log sync has scaled down to zero because we have not pushed any messages here. Let's do something interesting. I want to publish data into this S3 bucket, which currently has no object. This is called camel K. 
And in particular, I would like to use um, the AWS S3 sync, uh, but not this one, because this one creates one file for each message that I, I, I use. I'm going to use the streaming upload sync, which is really which is really cool. It can batch messages together and create files containing multiple messages. Okay, let's copy the example as we did before. Um, let's create a file called uh, s 3 syncbinding.yaml. Okay, and let's paste this example. Uh, let's sync the name. It was called s 3 syncbinding. Okay, um, as a source, we want to use the messages channel and as a sync i would like to use this command called aws s3 streaming upload i've not shown this to you but if you go into the namespace and say or oh, see get camelets since camelets are a custom resource you will find all the camelets that are present uh in in the uh in the catalog because um, the camelets are created by the operator when you install it and you also can customize what which camelets are present in you know, a namespace I just copy the properties that belong to my service account on S3 into this binding um, to see. Okay, that's my access key, and I'm using the bucket called Camel K. Uh, the name of the files will start with messages, and this is the region from S3. This is done, but I would like to do a, a last step because um, you can customize the camel at in particular. Um, I can create customize the number of messages that should be contained into a file. And this by default is 10 for this camelet, but I can also uh, customize that and say, I want to um, create a file anytime you, I, I create five messages instead of 10. So I can create this using OC, this camelet binding, but I can also use another method like going into the OpenShift console, hit plus uh, and paste the YAML here. Um, so creating a binding is like doing a REST call. You can even use Carl uh, to create this kind of integrations. And if you go back into the topology, you should see um, that, um, yes, another integration has been created. This time is from S3. And uh, the, the, these are related. OK, a revision is going to be created shortly by, uh, by Kennedy. This, everything has been created by Camel K. Um, OK. You see that uh, the pod is, is starting since uh, we are creating it now. Um, the pod starts by default, but it, it started by Kinetic. So let's start um, creating some messages. Hello again. Okay, I push at a message and you see that this log scene that was scaled down to zero started again to uh, fulfill uh, to process this message. Then I send a second message, a third message, and a fourth message. I go into the S3 bucket and I should not see anything here. But if I put a fifth message here and I refresh, hopefully I will see a messages file because uh, messages are batched in, into uh, a number of five. And if you load um, this file, you will see um, that yeah, there are all the JSON data that of, of, of the messages. The first one was hello again, and then you have two, three, and four, and five. So all messages are logged. Um, into these files on, on S3. Um, and then if you type other file messages, six, uh, seven, eight, nine, nothing, and then with the, another one, we should see another file. Yeah, messages one uh, with the same size as, as, as before. Um, you can even uh, send, uh, uh, let's send other two messages. Okay, these, are, these, of course, are not going to be created, but um, since this is serverless, at some point, this integration is going to scale down to zero if I'm not pushing any messages. But the streaming upload camelet already uploaded the data to S3, so when this scales down to zero, the data will be persisted, as we will see. Okay, this is the first part of the demo, and you see how cool are, are these camelets. Let's go into the second part and see what is the secret? So how these camelets are made? Um, so uh, camelets, as I've shown you, are Kubernetes custom resources. They are YAML files that can be also installed into Kubernetes, let's say. Um, the camelets themselves are composed of two main blocks. So there is a configuration schema, which is a JSON schema definition of the 
um, properties of the camel. So it contains the name of the camel, the title, the description, and all the properties, the required one, the types of the properties. And uh, so uh, this is um, all information that can be used to drive a new UI. For example, the OpenShift console was taking this schema to create a form that you can fill to create a Camelot binding. Okay, and of, of course, also the Camel catalog, the Camelot catalog website is created from this schema with a, a process that creates the documentation from the schema that is contained inside the Camelot. So this is metadata about the Camelot that, that can be used. It, it can be really useful to create UIs of that. The second part of the Camelot uh, is uh, the route template. So Camelot, the name Camelot means Camel Route Snippet. So it's a portion of route, of Camel Route that you can use uh, to do um, uh, your, your business logic. So uh, this is the part, the route template is the part that the Camel uh, runtime interprets to create uh, the job that you want. For example, uploading a file on S3. And it is a route template because it uses some place all the right Camelot source, Camelot sync. So it is a partial route. It's not a complete route. You complete it when you bind the Camelot to a destination. And it's also a template because it contains parameters that are filled whenever you can you create the binding. So this is how it works. Let's see an example. This is the Dropbox Syncs Camelot. On the left hand side, you don't need to understand all the details here, but you see that um, there are some Kubernetes metadata. There is an icon. Uh, which is SVG based and basis, basics for encoded. There is a definition with a title description, then the properties like access token, client identifier, and details about the properties. This is the metadata. On the right hand side, you have the flow, so which is the route template that the, cam the camel runtime interprets. It starts in this case, since this is a source, starts from cam is a sync, it starts from camel at source, which means uh, you can put whatever you want before this. It's a placeholder. And then you see it does some transformations. And then at the end, it calls Dropbox uh, Camel component, passing the properties that were declared in the left hand side. So the access token, remote path, and all that stuff. So uh, this is how a Camelet is done. So um, we are going to create a simple one shortly. Um, but uh, if you want to go into the details of how to create even complex Camelet, there is a complex Camelot called Earthquake Source in the Camelot Developer Guide, um, which is on the, the, the Camel K website, um, which tells you how to create a Camelot that um, take all the events of earthquakes happening around the world and uh, bring them into a specific destination, whatever you want. The nice thing about this Camelot is that it uses inside many components like timer, HTTP, Capain, Jackson, Claim Check, Split, uh, JSON path. A lot of them, uh, but from the point of view of Luke Skywalker, we just needs to uh, bring earthquake data into the, uh, his uh, machine learning platform. Uh, Luke Skywalker just types camel bind earthquake source to channel events, and then all the earthquakes events will flow into the um, kinetic channel called events. And it doesn't need to know about all these components and uh, enterprise integration patterns. Um, also to mention that a camel at, uh, can use multiple components. It's not tied to just use one. Okay. Okay. If you are an advanced Camel developer and you want to bind the data to a destination, you can still use Camelets inside Camel routes, even complex Camel routes. You can start from Camelet earthquake source and then continue uh, and marshal and then transform the body, etc. Um, so you can use Camelets as if they were components, but they are made of Camel routes template. Um, if you if you tried in the past to create a Camel component, you know that creating Camel components is a fairly uh, difficult task. While creating a Camelet that can abstract uh, um, uh, some use case is really easy, as as I will show you in this second demo. So let's cross finger and do our own Camelot. Um, we're going also to create it in the developer, in the OpenShift Dev console, then use it to, to bind data into S3. And then we will contribute also to the upstream catalog. I hope I have time, yeah, as I, I have 10 minutes almost. So let's do it. Um, where do we start? Um, from the use case, of course. Uh, I took this use case that was uh, created by Pasquale Conjusti. Uh, he wrote a, a nice blog post about, the, about this. There is this random data API um, that contains um, 
beer uh, endpoint that you can contact and get any time a, a random beer in uh, in JSON format. So it's uh, Rolling Rock uh, and uh, Kirin beer. Uh, so I, I don't know this one. But this is the endpoint that we can use uh, inside an integration. So now I'm going to create um, here a camel k integration i've not done this um, uh, before in this presentation so this is how uh, uh let's say hardcore camel developer do with camel k he creates this in camel in its um, beer.yaml file i'm using yaml but you can use uh, other languages yaml is easy, easier to port into into a camel so it it creates a file it scaffolds a file with an example of timer to log we can customize this uh, let's call this timer beer um, and every for example five seconds uh, we can uh, use the HTTP component uh, to um, contact this uh, random beer API and then just log it for, for the moment um, you can use camel run and for example we can use uh, uh, the dev mode uh, to run this beer.yaml file and if I type this uh, so Basically, as you see here in the, in the integration screen, a beer integration is created on the cluster. Let's go to the topology. Um, this is disconnected from anything else. Uh, you see that both uh, integration uh, have scaled down to zero. And so this beer integration is running here, but I see the load streaming here. So this says uh, it's a rapid input stream. So I need to uh, provide some other option to log. And you see that. Uh, this is suggested from uh, the, the tooling. Uh, for example, I want to show the streams, uh, which by default is false. Uh, let's put it to true, and then the integration is going to be redeployed. I'm sorry for the colors, um, but I, I can tell you that I see now um, the JSON data about uh, beers that are printed every five, five seconds. Let's hit Ctrl C. And then the integration is is killed and it is also removed from the OpenShift main space, which is a, a remote one. So with this integration that was running, I need to create a camera that is reusable um, by other people. How can I do? I scaffold another uh, file, and in, in this case, I call it beer source dot camelet dot yaml the extension camelet yaml tells uh, camel k that i need uh, a scaffolding for a camelet and then i can customize that this is a timer to log again that i can customize um, the title i can set it to, to beer source and these uh, will produce periodic events uh, about beers and uh, there are no required parameters properties um, i want to keep the period property uh, to make it customizable that, like, which is the interval between two events so set, let's set it to five seconds as the other integration uh, this camel that we produce uh, application json data and then uh, this is the flow that we want to implement but we uh, can delete this one and just take the other one that we have uh, just run uh, with, with the camel k so uh, okay this is the flow and we need just to uh, indent this uh, one more step and we should be done so we start from timer beer the parameters are the period but instead of fixing the 5000 we can use the properties the properties defined in the definitions part so i can use the properties placeholder period that re reference this one that will be set by the user and then i go to this uh, uh endpoint to get some beer and then i can use at the end that placeholder called camelet uh sync this is a placeholder so um you, you, you put that and the uh, camel k will replace that with whatever you put next so when you bind this source to a specific destination and the camelet is done um I, I want only to take um some metadata for example these annotations which um, will bring for example a nice uh icon to, to to the beer source but they are not uh fundamental so they just put an icon some metadata about who is uh, creating this this camelet i i set this to uh the apache software foundation and then uh, other information about the versioning because we want to contribute it but this is just um, metadata that we want to attach to this camelet how can you create that oh see apply uh beer 
source. Since camelets are Kubernetes custom resource, you can apply using those apply minus f. Don't, don't forget that. So the camelet peer source has been created. So now if I go into the OpenShift console, I can hit uh, add to project and create an event source. And now in the catalog, I will see the peer source, which our description that produces periodic events about peers. And I can create this event source. The parameter that I specified is the period. I can set it, I don't know, to, to, to four seconds inside of five. The destination will be the messages channel. So I can hit um, create, let's call this peer source binding as the others. And that's it, create. And so this will create another source so called peer source that will start up and push events into messages. And now we should see these two integrations starting up uh, because they start to receive uh, uh, events. So if we look also from the OpenShift console at the pods, at the uh, log sync uh, binding, we should see in the logs that this is going to uh, print some data every time we publish another beer, you see here. We have published one, two, three, four, five, and six, uh, messages so we can go to S3. If I refresh, I should see a second file here, which is smaller, that contains, you remember, the two messages, 11 and 12, that I pushed to Telegram. That was created when the uh, integration scaled down to zero. Now this file, messages three, contains, uh, the, of course, uh, the beers. And yeah, you should see it, that there is, uh, uh, Shima Grand Reserve here. And yeah, this is working. This is the, you can see also on the OpenShift console, uh, the, the old topology of your integration. So the, the, both this integration, and this one are publishing in S3 and into the logs. So this completes the demo. Uh, oh, of course, I promised you that I wanted to show how to contribute the Camelot. Of course, you can go into the Camel Camelot's um, uh, Git repository on Apache. And to contribute a camel, so you see that there are a lot of YAML files that are camelets. In order to contribute a new camelet, we just need to add a file and create a new file. <laughs> and basically, you can call it beer source.camelet.yaml uh, and then copy <laughs> the content of this camelet. It's really difficult to do that. And paste it here. I can commit directly because I'm a committer, but you will. We are going to create a new branch and propose a new file, basically. And uh, this is going to create a pull request. And once the pull request is created, then we will approve that, and then your camelot will appear here inside uh, this this once uh, this this catalog. So this is uh, how it works. Let's go back to the presentation. And okay, we have done all the three steps, and. Uh, Okay, just to, to mention you that after this talk, well, there will be another talk by Christoph, which is working on this both these two, two projects, uh, Knative CLI. So in Knative, we are um, adding an add-on for Knative to create uh, sources using the KN CLI to using using Camelets, so it, it will integrate better with with Knative. Um, we are also working, and in particular, Christoph is working on this project called Yats to test cameras using PDT testing. And we'll talk about after this one will be about that. So don't miss it. And yeah, contribute. I've shown you that it is really easy to create a pull request with a new camera with your use case. If you're a, a bit expert in camera, you can do it very, quite easily. And um, thank you. Uh, if there are questions, um, here. I don't see any questions. If you have some, do put them either into the chat or into the Q&A. We did get one question uh, during classes and Andreas uh, session on how to contribute uh, camlets from outside that are not uh, based on camel components. Some from a different, um, you know, a catalog source, I would say. Um, okay. Is this something we're working on? Is this something that we'll have in future? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. The camelets um, need to be um, uh, 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 need to know the API of Apache Camel, of course. Uh, but uh, you can create camelet uh, with any Java code. So when you create a, a camel K integration, you can uh, specify a dependency on any Maven artifact that is present on Maven Central or any other repository. Um, so if you put some Java code there that will produce exchanges that are compatible with camel, uh, then you can wrap that as a camelet and use that 
code, even if it's not a camel component uh, inside the, the uh, as a camel. So yeah, it's it's possible. Uh, I've not seen uh, anyone doing this at the moment, but it, it's possible to do it quite easily. I mean, it um, should not be difficult. Not not easy as as creating a camel let based on camel components, but it's not so difficult. And uh, one more thing, you mentioned camelets are uh, also going to be a concept that's not only in camel K. Could you a bit expand on that and how where are we going with that? Yeah, exactly. So um, so the camelets are, are generic. Initially, we, we published the, the camel camelets components inside camel K, uh, but then we moved it to the core. So the templating system is present in the, in the core camel, camel um, um, project and now also the camel camelet component is present there so any other project uh, is able um, to to use the camelets and um, um, so you can create some scripts uh, that just reference some camelets using jbang for example uh, that run locally and uh, use camelets at the moment uh, you can reference uh, camelets inside Camel Kafka connectors and use them to bind data in Kafka. These are the two use cases that are not supported. But I also envision in the future the possibility um, to have some kind of UIs because camelets can drive UIs. And those UIs can scaffold, for example, a Spring Boot project uh, that contains a binding based on camelets. And then you can just run as uh, so with the Java Java uh, minus jar. So this, there are a lot of possibilities, and camelets are the building blocks so that allow this these possibilities to be uh, done by by people. Awesome. So that were my my questions, and I think on mind of many uh, during these sessions. Thank you very very much, Nicola on this uh, introduction to Camlets. Uh, next session is going to be after a short break, and it's going to be by Christoph on uh, testing Camlets, verify event sources and things with Yux. So join us again at 1710 UTC. Thanks, Nicola, once again. Yeah, thank you. Don't miss that one. <laughs>